Okay, perfect. We got ourselves another day in November. Uh, this day, the prompt is four sided. Just go to the website. Last time it was three sided, so I made. Oh, what's going on? A nice triangle, pizza slice. Today, four sided, I was thinking of. Huh? There we go, four sided. Making a nice. Windmill. Because I don't know how many people know this, but Blender is based in the Netherlands, in Holland. And yeah, there's a bunch of these things around. They're very nice. Uh, <laughs> and they have four blades here on the spinny thing. So I thought, very nice and thinning. Let's make a windmill. Should also not be too difficult to do in geometry nodes. Just a bunch of primitives, uh, primitives stick them together. And there we go. So... Yeah, let's just get going. Uh, as always, I'm gonna, or as is my plan for always this November, I'm going to start out with a completely empty geometry, so nothing as a basis, and then work my way through with uh, geometry nodes. Uh, I was planning on adding like very, very basic shading, but nothing, uh, nothing uh, much. Siren, yes, nice. <laughs> Hey everyone, uh, yeah, let's, let's just see how we can get this going here. So for the windmill, we need a cylinder base, which no input, just the output is just going to have eight vertices, I think, as a low poly base. And then I want to rotate this a little bit just to have it uh, face differently. And I'm gonna just go for, with that, 360 divided by eight. Wait, it can't be right. By 16, there we go. I got a basis. Ah, Fox here again, nice. Yeah. Very, very old traditional technology here, made in the very newest technology that Blender has to offer. It's going to be interesting to see. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not super sure how detailed I can get this. I was planning on actually getting some nice details in there, here and there, to actually have it interesting looking in the end, because otherwise it's just going to be a bunch of different primitives stuck together, which is not super interesting. Uh, but at least it's a completely different workflow than the thing that I did last time, which was uh, more organic displacement based uh, modeling. Maybe make the windmill itself four sided. Hmm. Oh, yeah, it's not a bad idea. Uh, that should work out. Yeah, let's do that. Why not? I think I'm still going to stick with the. Uh, um. I was going to say 45 degrees with the cylinder primitive because that gives me a nice amount of uh, of options that I can set that the cube primitive doesn't have. Eh, it's similar, but these are might, might be more useful as just seeing this at least more intuitive. But right now I'm not going to use them that much anyways. Okay, so I'll just take a second cylinder cube and then join them together. That's going to be my base. Maybe I'll just give it a frame and call it base. And this is going to be my uh, main hull thing, which is just going to sit on top. Oh, scale, translation. Look at this. A lot of vertical space with the node set up here. It's going to be a little bit thicker, and then I want this to have like a gradient uh, uh, here, uh, a profile, where it's more curved to the top. 
Um, oh, like tapered. And I think for that, actually, I should make this a little bit differently. Because I, yeah, because I want more precise control over the uh, the curvature on the side here. I'm going to before I scale this and transform it into the into the position where I want it later. I'm just gonna have this have a radius of one, a depth of one. So it's just wait. Is that correct? Oh yeah, it is. And then. Uh, just push it up so it's standing on 0 0.5 and then I can uh, get a parameter that's nicely just following uh, from the bottom to the top by just taking the position uh, the, the y the z coordinate of the position so I just take the uh, position field separate the components and then this is just going to be my gradient along the Z component. And I think at that point, I want to see what's going on. So I'll also make a shader setup for Eevee so I can actually see what's uh, what's happening. I did this the last stream as well. In the future, that's not going to be necessary because there's going to be a viewer for fields. I'm not 100% sure when that's going to happen, though. So for now, it needs to, uh, we need to do this workaround thing. So I create the viewer output. I output it to a viewer attribute. And then may I make a new viewer material that I'll also assign in the end. Set material. And that. Oh, there you go. And that viewer material is just going to display the attribute that we wrote here to the viewer attribute. Typo. There we go. And then that should already work. So that's the position right now. Let's take the Z. And oh, I've got to change the settings. But there you go. You can also uh, already see that it works which is super nice because it's real time. It's just Eevee and it works. But I gotta change some input settings here because I'm used to a different input. Key map, uh, extra shading by menus, there we go. Okay, uh, now that we got the viewer set up, we can just start working. This is not necessary anymore. For the viewer, I'm just gonna create this reroute socket so everything we plug in here every field that's going to be plugged in there is going to be displayed with Eevee and it's super responsive and super nice yeah um, and then let's see I want to basically scale the um, the X and Y position of the points on this cube by a curve that follows oh, that follows this uh, parameter that I just created. And for that, I'm going to use a float curve. Float curve. And with that, I can control the profile. And that profile I'm going to use for some vector math, probably. Yes, vector math. And I need to combine X, Y, Z because I only want to scale this on two components, X and Y with the same factor. Z is going to stay the same. Mm. Yes, and then I need the position again. And that I multiply with that vector. Z factor one this and then set position okay and that should work Oop, there you go wait wait should it scale it to zero
Hmm. Let's see. I'm a little bit confused because this, oh, is this not starting at zero? It should be. Ah, I plugged it into the offset. Never mind. There we go. Okay. You might be wondering this was better before and now it's worse, but we'll make it work again. Let's take a map range. And right now this is the, uh, this, this outputs values between zero and one. So it's going to scale it to zero in the center and then to one at the top. Instead, I want it to start at one. No. Let's say one is at the top. So I have better control of how large this actually is. And then uh, at the bottom, it's going to be like 1.4 or something. So... Yes, I gotta map this from zero to one to one and four point one, uh, one point four, like this. And then that is going to be combined with the rest. Oh. Like this. Nice. Okay. But also, now this needs to be scaled up. But I have to do that after I created the map. Actually, I should probably capture the position attribute so that everything that is created here can be uh, reused later and doesn't get reevaluated because it's supposed to be a mask or a parameter for that matter. So let's capture the position as a vector and then use that instead. I don't know if people by now still have issues with the concept of capture and attributes because I I don't know how much in detail I talked about it before. Maybe the basis is just that if you don't capture it, and it's just like this, everywhere where it's actually used in the geometry node, like here, so here, this position would be reevaluated on the geometry that's passed in. So if, uh, if you were to use the same parameter that I exported here, way later down the line, and I did a lot of changes to the geometry, but I used the same mask again, it might be completely different because it's going to be uh, regenerated from a new position. But if I capture the position first, it's going to use that position at this time and then propagate the information down the line, which is very nice. So now we can just use this same Z component later on, even though uh, this might be transformed completely differently, which I'm going to do now. Because, oh, no, no rotation. This should be, oh yeah, I shifted it already. Yeah, like scaled up along the Z axis, for example. It's starting fine. What is the difference if I make a windmill by modeling and by using geometry nodes? Well, <laughs> one is procedural and one isn't. Uh, you might say it doesn't make sense. Why would you make it procedurally? But oh well, we're in November, so everything is procedural. But yeah, if you if you wanted to just have a whole bunch of windmills that all look different, then it would be very easy to just make them larger if you made them with geometry nodes, for example. Like scale them along one axis or like make them higher and everything. Um, 
Mm, nah, I could. Nah. <laughs> I'm just gonna make it first, and then we can see what what will be parameterized. Okay, another cylinder. Wait. This all is the main hull. This was the base. And now we need a top. The future is procedural. <laughs> yes. Everything will be procedural in the future. Let's take a look at this. So for the top, I was thinking of just taking a cylinder and or half a cylinder and just popping it on top. For that, it just needs to have the correct uh, dimension. That should be fine. I guess we'll just take another transform node. Uh, like this. This should be two, I think. Probably. Let's try this as well. Wait, didn't I? I thought I made it one at the top, did I not? Ah, radius one. <laughs> well, 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 maybe I should have used uh, the cube. Okay, I'm gonna use the cube instead. Because radius means that it's going to put the, the vertices at radius one, and that will result in shorter edges. Right. Okay. Two. This. Z. One. No rotation. There we go. Back to the start, but now it has the correct dimension. Because if we take the top part and shift it all the way up. Yes, it's matching. Nice. And that, uh -huh. now comes the procedural part. Let's combine a vector and use a value input. So instead of manually trying and match it, I'm going to just take this value and use it for the translation and also for this. Oh, <laughs> well, math, <laughs> a little bit of math. So in the beginning, it has a scale of one. And then scale it up by this. So I need to, oh God, I shouldn't have done this. Correct the math. Just this? No. Where is it? Why is it in there? Okay, now I need to think, wait. That's fine. Okay, I move it up by no by the factor. Yeah, there we go. Why is it not perfectly aligning though? Yes, Geo Nodes is very nice for scattering gives you a lot of control. It's uh, much more precise than the old way of scattering with particles, which was also nice for what it was, but Geonauts is a bit nicer. Let's rotate this as well. But I'm not 100% sure where there's an offset. Ah. Where did I create this offset? Here. 
let's not do that. Let's keep it like this. The base needs to be a little bit thicker. Maybe a taller. Kind of like that. And for this nightmare, I'm just going to use a boolean. Because I don't want the intersections to stay. So instead of join, let's do a boolean operation. And it's going to be union. There you go. Clean topology. No cheese November. Well, <laughs> we felt that yesterday, uh, two days ago already. There was plenty of cheese involved with the pizza. Okay, is this going to... Uh, this? I think I'll also make it a little bit wider at the bottom this actually let's add some parameters so later on we don't lose what's actually important so this is the base width and this was the height Yeah, good enough for now. And this is the top. I didn't actually increase it. Let's go for this. And then also thicken this up. I'll, I'll just use the same parameter and Scale it up, down. Beautiful. Oh, hmm. Well, <laughs> do I fix this? I wasn't really planning on making more of a kind of a clock tower windmill. It doesn't really bother me that much. I think I'll just keep it as it is. This is fine. Okay. Then top needs to be a little bit more detailed. There's going to be another cylinder. Hmm. Actually, I don't want to include this stuff in the Boolean operation. So I think instead of putting this all on it on here, I will just do it afterwards. So another cylinder joined together with this. There we go. There it is. Okay, this should also then take uh, the same transformation, so it's at the correct height. Oh. Oh yeah, this is the scale. Wrong, uh, wrong vector. There we go. And then an additional transformation. Hello? Like this, kind of. Are there even windmills that are smaller at the base? Uh, well, <laughs> I'm not an architect. I would assume it's not the most uh, um, 
physically integral type of building when it's thinner at the base. <laughs> but there might be. Will using GeoNodes increase RAM usage or will it be the same as if we're modeled traditionally? Um, as far as I know, it shouldn't increase the RAM usage as long as whatever you're doing in between the beginning and the end is not blowing up the RAM. Because it will still have to go through all the calculations, right? But if what it ends up with is the same as if you'd just done that thing by hand, then it shouldn't increase the RAM usage. But yeah, you, you could like scatter billions and billions of points and then throw away 99% of them. It's still going to uh, calculate all these points. So keep that in mind. It's not about the final result only. It's also about every single step in between. Which is why huge node graphs just take a while to uh, to be evaluated because there's so much stuff that needs to be calculated in between. Mm. I think that bug where, where you drag select yeah it's I think it's when you start dragging from a value that's already one. Uh, already zero, and you type in zero, doesn't change. And here, if I type in one again, oh, it works. That's very specific for a bug. Yeah, I gotta report that. Might have to fix that later. It would be great <laughs> if you can just do it, but otherwise, I'll just report it and uh, hope that somebody picks it up at some point. Should apply the scale to the roof. Hmm? Not sure what you mean by that. I don't know to apply any scale. This is all just one object. But yeah, the, the basic shape is just going to be this, I think. And I'll just move on to the actual rotor in the front. And for that, we're going to make some nice uh, rotational array kind of thing which is something that people have been asking for for years and years for the Blender Array modifier. But now that we have geometry nodes, we don't need that stuff. We can just make a circle. Well, I haven't really <laughs> I haven't really tried it before. But I'm sure it'll work fine. Make a circle. Maybe maybe I'll just create one blade of the of the rotor before. Just have something to actually uh array. Okay. Let's make it a very, very simple thing. Probably a grid. By the way, I think something that's probably going a little bit unnoticed is that the Node Wrangler shortcut for previewing something has changed for Geometry Nodes. So in Shader Nodes, it's Control shift click to connect anything to the output. And uh, now we have this Viewer node here, which at some point for Geometry Nodes is going to be able to um, preview anything you click on in the viewport and also preview a field you can plug in here. It only, uh, right now it only works for the spreadsheet. That's not incredibly useful, but sometimes it is useful. Um, but yeah, later on it's going to be the main thing to preview stuff all over the node tree when those features are actually implemented. But the functionality of the node wrangler to connect something to the output is still there, but it's on shift alt click. Yeah. Just to have mentioned that because I don't know if people know that it moved or just think that it's gone because it's not. Okay. Grid. Uh, 
I'll just make something random. Kind of like this. And transform. No need to report it, that's good. <laughs> One less report to do, nice. Okay, let's try and do the rotational array. In theory, we should just be able to instance on points on this curve circle. And there we go. It's not necessarily <laughs> the right thing for for a windmill. But it works. Could I get the tan uh, the tangent of the of the curve? I don't I don't remember what inputs we have here. Ah. That's easy. That's almost it. So now I just need to align the Euler to the tangent. So the tangent is just, let's take a look at the circle. Well, it's called a circle. The tangent is just going to go kind of like this. So I want to align the Y axis of my blade. Let's move it up. Yes, the y axis along the no, the x axis along the tangent. And then I do this. And then I have a thing. Why is it? Oh. Huh? Ah, it should be the negative, right? Yes. Need to invert it. Let's do some vector math. There you go. And now we have all we need. So if we put the radius to zero, oh, it explodes. It's not good. To almost zero, <laughs> it's just going to be this kind of a thing. Beautiful. That was easy. So that's the rotor. Child objects don't move with the parent. Hmm? Right now there's no parenting going on. But yeah, this translation totally works. So the instancing actually references the origin after we have it from here. So it's actually going to move it from the origin into the points of this circle. Like this. Now we just have to make the geometry properly. I guess I can make a curve to mesh. Is that a thing yet? Curve to mesh? Aha, uh -huh, there is. Oh, yes, I need to realize the instances. Right? That wasn't it. Ah. Curve to <laughs> mesh the curve, damn it. There we go. Does it even matter now? It shouldn't matter, uh, at least right now. Okay, and then I curve to mesh.
and I use another circle. Mesh circle is fine. Four vertices. Ah, I need a curve. <laughs> curve circle with four vertices. A little bit thinner. There we go. Oh God. Good enough. But I think I'm gonna twist the curve. Or wait, do I twist the curve or rotate? I think I. Yeah, it's just twisted. Twist. No? Is it not called twist? Tilt! There we go. Like this. Beautiful. What even was this? Ah, yeah, this was like the, the axle kind of thing. And then this is just going to be put on top. Please make life of character snow rigging. <laughs> I can uh, I can poke some people. I'm not gonna do it myself. We have a we have a professional rigger here in our headquarters. Would probably love to do it. <laughs> okay. Now I'll just do some transformation stuff. I think I'm even not gonna bother making the scale match up beforehand I'll just I'll just do it right now here because I didn't really think ahead which which is fine it's totally fine this just goes up here ah I do need it to be in the correct position though so I should just be able to take this vector that I used a couple of times before use some vector math and add this on top of whatever what uh, whatever other vector I'm transforming this by just copy this Hmm. Doesn't work. Okay, hover, copy, paste. Doesn't seem to work for some reason. Ah, because it's a meters. Well. Might want to report that as well. <laughs> Did you know everything about the program? <laughs> I don't think I can claim that I know everything about Blender. I don't know if there is anybody that would claim that. There's a lot to know about this software. I certainly don't know everything. I guess we're figuring out right now all the things that I don't know about geometry nodes. Because I have been spending most of my recent time when I was using geometry nodes with a very old version. so. I'm a little bit out of date for that. Okay, now I just need to have some corner of some some kind of connection. This was the whole rotor and up here 
This was just the array, and this is a blade. Why am I? I should I should be doing this before instancing. This doesn't make sense. Like this. Okay, same result, but the workflow is a little bit more neat because I'm actually creating a single blade first. And actually, I do think I will just um, put this back to point zero 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 one something and then make the correct offset by offsetting it ahead of time. Like this. Mm -hmm. Are we building a helicopter engine? Very close. It's going to be a windmill. We already have a base. Oh. <laughs> I might need to fix some scaling later, but that's going to be fine. But yeah, it's going to be a windmill. Is that actually very far already for being less than an hour? I mean, it's it's very simple. So, but I'm planning to add more detail. Um, I was going to maybe add like tiles on the surface, just scattering them around, and then add some surface detail in the geometry. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really have a very precise plan of what I'm going to do, but I'm going to fill the time because I want to make something nice. Okay, another cube. I would also like to have these edges not be perfectly straight and everything. Add some randomization, some somewhere maybe well, yeah, I think I'll just do that afterwards. <laughs> it is kind of fun though that you're just able to to change everything in the node tree at all times, and it's super responsive as well. Another cube. Yeah, at this point, I'm just going to go back to the single blade and just add like a, a bar that goes all the way through. I was also thinking of adding some cloth. For that, I would need some, some fake kind of simulations so it's waving in the wind a little bit. And for now, where did the join go here? Just a bar. Kind of like this, maybe. I'm just doing it very, very free form, not very precise. What is happening? Oh, it automatically connected something that shouldn't happen. But yeah, it shouldn't look like this. These are the points, and 
this is the instance. No idea why that uh, why that happened. But oh well. There we go. We need reference images. <laughs> Might not be a bad idea. <laughs> I mean, I, I looked at windmills beforehand. <laughs> um, windmill, maybe a square windmill. That's kind of what I'm doing. Oh, interesting. These look very interesting. Maybe a little bit too interesting. Hmm. That looks like squares are not too popular in terms of windmill shapes. But there's a couple. Yeah, they seem to like doing this separation of a top level and then a lower level. I'll keep that around. Yeah, I mean, adding windows uh, and those kind of details is an obvious choice that I'll just probably do at some point, hopefully. For now, I'll just get the basis going. Yeah, if you look at the whole thing, it's this. And it's it's not even that many nodes, I think it's fine. But yeah, the scaling here is way off. Oh, wrong. Wrong node. Yeah, here it was. It's cutting it very close. <laughs> If I would make this very uh, elaborate or very parametric, I would account for this with the offset, but I I think I won't. I'll just keep it at this. And just add two more cylinders over here. So this was the rotor. And for that, I'm going to add. Do I have a cylinder around? No. Cylinder transform. Just join it in there. this and then one more of these guys which is going to have a bunch more vertices and be a little bit thicker for the front wait right here perfect kind of that's a windmill 
Where do we spin it? Oh, <laughs> not quite the right direction. There we go. It's recognizable as a windmill. I put the link to the latest uh, experimental blender version into the description of the live stream as well, at least on YouTube. Uh, on Twitch, I didn't really change anything. But yeah, it's always builder.blender.org. We share the Blender file free. The Blender file will be on uh, the studio platform. I'm doing this on work hours and that's our platform. So it's gonna be there. It's not free, but uh, it's 10 euros a month. And yeah, the file's gonna be there. The, the video is uh, going to stay up on YouTube though. So yeah. that's free. Okay. Now it's time to think about some details. Let's check the reference again. So I was thinking of adding cloth. No, not maps. <laughs> like uh, this this kind of a cloth I guess it's just going from this one bar here and then connected to the to the corners and to the axles oh yeah and then we'll windmills also have this this kind of a thing which is just a bunch more bars to add But I think the cloth would be a nice touch to have something a little bit more organic shaped than all of these very primitive shapes. So it would be coming out of here and then connected. Hello? Over here. Where's grease pencil going? Over here and over here. It's spanning over there. Something's not working with this setup. And that might be a little bit more tricky to do. I don't think I'm going to account for gravity. I could. It shouldn't be too difficult. I mean, obviously it's not gonna be simulated just we're gonna be a little bit uh, fake simulators with some some waving in the wind and sagging so in terms of gravity it could just I, I could just mark some masks that I'll need for sagging the the cloth and then do that after I realize it in the very end after it's rotated and everything That would be totally fine. But yeah, I mean, f at first I just have to do something. So first it needs to be there before I can actually do some fake gravity on top. Yeah, I'm planning to t tear it cloth. No, that's a little bit too much, I think. <laughs> I've uh, Planning to do some of November. That I mean, I did some of November last year, but uh, I was right in the middle of working on Sprite Fright and was doing that stuff in my free time. On in twenty nineteen, I was doing everything in my free time because I I was just finishing university and I didn't have anything to do at that time. So that was fine, but doing it while also having a full time job is kind of overkill. So now I'm doing it during work hours, which is really nice. Cloth. Okay, so this was a single blade. Yeah, 
and this is also getting the cloth. So another grid. And this is going to be a little bit more interesting. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to do it yet, but we'll figure it out. So the, because this is going to be more organic, I need a bunch of resolution. Um, but also, I mean, okay, let's just take a look at it here. Sorry, I'm still coughing once in a while a little bit. Can't wait for cloth nodes. Yeah, that would be really, really sick having this uh, in combination with geometry nodes. From what I heard, people are starting to very slowly think about working on them. Which is going to take a long time, but it's already visible on the horizon, I think, which is very cool. I can just copy this grid because I need the approximately same dimensions here and then hmm, I might just move uh, this yeah I might just move it over all the way And then transform. I'll also just copy that over. Whatever. So now it's perfectly aligned. But I need way more resolution. Uh, I'll just keep it as the same factor and to make it easy for myself. So I can just change it later on and don't have to change the values by hand. I'll just have a resolution slider. It's going to just multiply the second value by three. There you go. And then we have nice almost uh, square quads on this plane. And then, yeah, let's just grab our old friend, the viewer, because now that's going to be useful for a little bit more organic modeling. Right, because ah damn it I should have done it differently yes so here I'm gonna use the same kind of idea that I was using in the very beginning to get this uh, Z value along the along the bait what's going on here oh. along this edge to create the profile. Which is just doing the transformation afterwards. But first keeping this grid. Let's keep this around uh, at one one. And then yeah, let's just transform it to somewhere 0 0.5, 0 0.5, I think, let's see, yes, because now it's perfectly aligned with 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, which is going to give us a nice uh, UV mapping. So I'm basically just uh, generating UV coordinates like this by first having a very, uh, just, just having this square grid then creating a mask uh, or a UV uh, uh, coordinate map by reading out the 
position. Well, actually, this is already what I need, so I can just capture the position. Capture position. And then now if I, oh, let's first take a look at this. Ah, it's not connected. Yeah, I, ca I can't wait to actually have the field preview. It's going to be amazing. This is not quite working. Ah, it's connected the wrong geometry. So there we go. There we go. Now we have a nice UV map on this plane. And then we just do the scaling afterwards with another transform node. So just use these values for the scale. Mm, it doesn't work again. Okay. I don't really care about the meters, to be honest. Like this. And this needs to be reverted. And there we go. It's like nothing happened. Wait, it's not. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Did I mess something up? Oh, I guess I need to use the scaling. Oh, yeah, I do. Um, not if I do it in two steps. Right? Yes. It's going to be a lot of transform nodes in this tree, but who cares? It's going to be fine. Okay. Hmm? Yes. Okay. We have a basis for a cloth, which is just a high resolution mesh that's following the wing. And now. This can nicely be, where was it? Here, cloth. Oh God, it's already starting to be a mess, the tree. But that's why I try and re uh, uh, frame everything and give it names beforehand. Let's give this a name, call it um, wing, no, cloth. Let's also call these wings and not blades. It's a bit nicer. I've been following the chat much. Yes, a lot of geometry nodes tutorials are very much outdated because of the redesign. <laughs> but uh, in terms of in terms of general design, not much is going to change from now on. I think it's just going to be added on top. So uh, all the tutorials that are coming out now regarding 3.0 and higher are probably going to be fine and going to be valid for a long time. I think. But yeah, the, the redesign was very much needed. All of the stuff that I've been doing with uh, fields would have been very much a pain before. Because instead of building actual node trees, we would be building snakes operations. Okay, and now I can use this very attribute Actually, maybe I should start making node groups 
instead of these frames. So I can dedicate outputs more specifically. But maybe, yeah, I'll, I'll just keep going and then I'll start doing that as well. But yeah, now I can use this to have very nice parameters, UV parameters along the uh, different dimensions of this cloth, which is going to be very useful. Because then I can do a bunch of vector math and uh, uh, pin the corners into specific points, which is going to be nice. So let's see. Where's the viewer I need it back? Um, so how's this going to look? This whole edge is basically going to be attached. Then this corner is going to be attached to the corner here. And this is going to be connected with a string over here. So that string is going to have a corner attached as well. Like here, and then this is going to be basically free floating. Uh, not really. Oh, God. I don't know if I want to dive deep into the math for this or just make it look kind of right. I think that's probably what I'm going to go for. And for that, I should even. Yeah, I think I'm just going to scale this a little bit too small. And then uh, use the masks, uh, use some masks that I generate from the UVs to pin them to the right positions. And the rest can basically be hanging with gravity and flapping in the wind. Okay. So, set position. It's going to be a bunch of set position nodes, I think. And some vector math. Um, yes. Scaling with masks. Let's take a look at the UV map. Hmm. Why doesn't it work? Do I need to should it work? Ah. Do I need to realize the instances or something? I do. Interesting. I thought this would work even without realizing. Oh, do they just not? No, I'm. I'm not sure. I thought this would work. I'm a little bit confused. But it's fine. But may maybe I should realize this after because the rotation. Yeah, I mean, the windmill is going to spin. Maybe I'll just add this parameter. The spinning is going to happen here. Yes. So, make a combine XYZ. And then 90 degrees, 90 times pi divided by 180. Yes. Yeah, it's just because this is in degrees and this is in radians. Calculation is just degrees times pi divided by 180. You can also just use a math node for that if you don't want to keep that in mind. 
there's two degrees and two de uh, two radians, same thing. Well, now that I have it here, maybe I'll just do it like this. Same thing. And then spinning is going to happen here. Spin. Good. Now, back to the mask. Right, so spinning is here, and then realizing the instances is after spinning, because, yes, because, just because. The only difference between the different instances of the, of the wings is going to be the gravity direction, basically. Or like the wind displacement, and that's just going to be affecting it after. Uh, after the rotation happens. Good. Back to the cloth. Now I need to make some masks. So, math nodes. Okay, now that I have a good look at this, I can see that... Um, Right, this is y equals zero, this is x equals zero, this is x and y equals one, x and y equals zero. So one one is going to be pinned to this point. So I need a mask that is one at one one and zero at zero zero. And for that I'm just going to multiply x and y. There we go. Good enough. Now I just add a power node to control the uh, the fall off. And then I use this to scale the effect of this node. Oh, right. <laughs> that That's not how it works. Wait, 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 wait. I need to... Yeah, I should probably just use the offset and then use the position input. Because right now I just put all the, all the points into the origin. I just set the position of them all to be zero and that's not what I need to do. I need them to be at the position by default. So I'm just going to use an offset. And that offset is going to be the difference between the position and the point where I want to set them to scaled by the mask. Yeah. And now I can yeah, just pin this one point here somewhere. And that somewhere is going to be right there. But this is not the most convenient way of looking at it. So instead, let's look at this, at this. I'm a little bit confused as to why zero, zero, zero is here. Oh, right, wrong direction. And now, it kind of looks like a piece of cloth, right? That's pinned somewhere. And you can change how much pressure is applied. Okay. Yeah, I'll just eyeball where this is going, I think. It's going to be fine. No. Oh. Well, 
Wait, how are you going to be doing gravity and wind with notes? Uh, I'm gonna cheat it. <laughs> it's gonna be all fake. There's no such thing as uh, simulation notes in Blender yet. But I'm just gonna create a bunch of masks like the one that I was using here. And then I'm going to uh, use those masks to make it flop around with some uh, noise animation and like sag down. Um, yes, yeah, uh, last time I was on, on the 3.0 beta version, today I'm on alpha. I think I'll stick to alpha throughout the month because there might be some f uh, some changes in geometry nodes that I want to take uh, advantage of. But up until what I've been doing here, the beta version of uh, 3.0 should be totally fine as well. Okay. Yeah, I think the questions can't be way too long and in detail here. I, I gotta keep going with my stuff. Yeah, in, in Blender.chat there's an Everything Nodes uh, channel where you can ask people anything about nodes and there's a bunch of people in there that are glad to help out as far as I know. Okay. What was I doing? Right, I pinned one of the edges, uh, one of the corners, and now let's pin another one. So same thing, but now it's a different corner. So instead of just multiplying X and Y, I'm going to invert one of them by subtracting it from one. And that one is, do I remember? This was the Y axis, so I'm inverting the Y axis. Like this and then I do the same thing I multiply X and the inverted Y I power it up and then just do the same thing here again I subtract the position from the point where I want them to be and then I offset it by that difference scaled by uh, get by the mask that I just created. Now of course it's going to be a different point. That looks kind of alright. I think I'm going to pull it up a little bit as well. Let's just take a look at uh, the the resulting thing. Yeah. I think I'm gonna try having having this in a way where it, uh, where it bulbs a little bit. I mean, it should go back. Oh God. Are the pieces of cloth on windmills usually in the front of this structure? Looks like they are. Okay. That's fine. Dig a moat. Yes, I was I was thinking of adding a little bit of an environment because it would be nice. Uh, it would be nice. Maybe having it like stand uh, uh, on the water or something. But first, I gotta finish the windmill itself. Would love to see how this compares to the old attributes workflow. Imagine long chains of appropriate math nodes. Yes. So I mean. I'm thinking of 
maybe I, I could just enable the legacy system and try and redo like just this part here. But yeah, this kind of stuff where there's no actual geometry nodes like these, but just math nodes um, would be a lot of pain with the old system because you would have to use uh, let's just turn it on very quickly. I'm not going to redo the whole thing, but just to show the old ways of doing things. Why is there no experimental tab? And it needs to be turned on somewhere, right? Where was that? Develop actress? Yeah. Um, there we go. There is this whole long list of attribute nodes, and they're all dead, except for these two, I think. And for good reason, because they're not necessary anymore. Instead, we can just use the regular vector math and math nodes. But before, there was this specific attribute math node, which would pass the whole geometry around and then you type in a name, and then another name, and then another name, and then you select which math operation to do. And it's just one of these many, many nodes, and they're all in succession. It's impossible to know which one does which, and it's just a chain of operations, and it's a nightmare. But now, you actually see, okay, these this multiplication and this multiplication are using the same x input and this is just the inverted y. So it's basically the same operation just with an inverted y, uh, y input. And this is basically the same. And then they're operated in succession and the rest is just happening here. And it's much cleaner and you actually know what's going on when looking at it. Yeah. So that's the, the grassy hill. Hmm. Ah, band practice. Have fun, Sibren. Sounds nice. This year uh, looks complicated. Uh, I don't know what you're referencing, but if you if you think that this look looks comp uh, complicated, then you should look at the other option that you would have with the old system, which is just a chain that is like this long with a bunch of names typed into it. Okay, no more slacking. I need to create more masks. So this is the basic cloth deformation. Oh, also, I forgot that I, oh, did I change something? Yes. Did I, oh no, did I press F by I think I pressed F by accident. Okay, it's fine. Oh, the, the nodes in general look complicated. It's just a bunch of very repetitive steps and they're all joined together. It's just a bunch of cylinders really. Now we're getting in the more complicated part very slowly. And I'm already one and a half hour in. I'm not sure how much detail I'm going to be able to add. We should be talking less. Okay. So base cloth deformation. Let's add the piece of string. It's just going to be a curve. Um, primitive curve line. And let's make it curve to mesh. Ah, <laughs> that's also not great. I'm typing in curve to mesh and it's auto selecting mesh to curve because all the names are matching, all the words are matching. But the order is ignored. I should point that out as well at some point. Right. 
And the start is going to be the exact same vector as this, because this is where we attach the cloth. Just make it a vector input instead. Um, what was the... I think it was Control-Alt-C. No. Control-Shift-C. No. There was some shortcut to copy whole vectors. I don't remember which one it was. Let's do it one by one. Hmm. All right. Can't be any of these. Not sure. Okay, so this is going to be the start point of the piece of string. And the end point is going to be Oh yeah, right, this is going to be connecting to the next uh, next win wing of the windmill. So I'd rather look at it in the result. Also, I don't really see what's going on with the curve. not too far off. Maybe there. Looks kind of neat. Just need to make the curve thicker. Um, circle. Not this thick. That's kind of all right. I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with thickness of this because there's no such thing as solidify yet in nodes. Um, I don't know if it's really important for this to have thickness. Maybe it's fine. It's probably going to be fine. And yeah, this should have a little bit more dimension to it. I do, yeah, I do want to have some like seams on here. Where oh, the grease pencil is not working, where it's sagging in between a little bit, like this, very, very roughly. Okay, gotta drink something. Yeah, so the con uh, the concepts with geometry nodes when you're working just with maths on uh, on these fields uh, are now that the nodes are basically compatible, uh, basically the same as with shader nodes, because all of this stuff um, I could basically just instead do with shader displacement, like this displacement stuff. There's no real reason to do it in geometry nodes other than you see it in the viewport in real time which is quite amazing if you think about it um, because also there's a bunch of these texture nodes that are exactly the same and designed um, to be exactly the same as in shader nodes so you will get the same results whether you do the displacement in here or in the shader so in theory, and I've been I've been thinking about uh, about doing that because it sounds really cool. In theory, I could just go ahead and uh, port basically all of the 
November entries that I've been doing in the past years with shader nodes with uh, vector displacement uh, in shader nodes into geometry nodes and see it in the viewport in real time, which would be kind of cool. Can you just use offset from a set position for thickness? Um, well, I can I can duplicate the mesh and then offset that a little bit. Uh, that that's true. But then there's going to be this gap between the two pieces of cloth. Basically, it's not going to have actual thickness. I could uh, take the boundary edge and make a curve from it and then give it thickness that way. Which actually I might, I might do that. It's kind of a little bit of a cheeky way of doing this, but let's just try it out. Why not? Okay, so to get the boundary, I don't think there's a note for that yet, no. Eventually, it would be nice to select edges by boundary. So you'd only get the boundary edge, uh, the boundary loop of this geometry. Uh, so right now, we need to hack our way around that. Keep in mind that geometry nodes are still very, very uh, young. Like, this is the, fir the first release with the new system is not even out. And the very first with uh, release with the old system was was it a year ago? I think yeah, I think it was December. I think it was less than a year ago. And since then, it's been completely redesigned, and that's going to come out soon. Start with a subdivided cube. <laughs> ah, <laughs> that would be easier. And the thing is, I'm still. Because I need to. Hmm. Hmm. The thing is, I like with the setup as I have it right now, I would lose the dimension wherever I uh, shift the the points into this one point. I would need to account for the offsets, uh, the thickness beforehand. And I kind of just don't want to do that. <laughs> I want to. I think it might be easier to just try the curve thing. If it if it doesn't work, I'll throw it away. I'll just I'll just try it out very briefly. But yeah, to to get the boundary edge, I will just use the fields that I have, uh, the UVs. So I use more vector math, and then where are they? Oh yeah, those are the UVs. I'll just give them a reroute and then give that a name. It's the cloth UV. I subtract 0.5 in X and Y. Then I do the absolute of that. And then do the, you know, I separate the components. Take the max, I think. Yes, wrong node. Math node, take the maximum. I'm not sure I'm doing the easiest way. I just know that this is going to work. So I'm just doing this. And now if we look at the output, yeah, this is going to give us exactly a mask on the edge. and that we can then uh, use to delete geometry from the cloth. And 
the what was this? That was the piece of string. String. Ah, I still have the legacy nodes enabled. That's not a good idea. That's a very, very bad idea. I hope I didn't uh, mess up the file this way. It should be fine, I think. Because I only added these nodes in between. Um... the viewer and then I delete with this selection there you go and that looks about right now I just need to make sure that this really only gives us the outer edge and this looks fine so yeah because the edge itself is exactly on 0 0.5 because I uh, subtracted 0 0.5 in the beginning and then uh, yeah, everything else, everything that's less than 0 0.5 is going to be deleted and only the edge remains points is good and then I do a curve to mesh and I use the same string profile and join it together with this. And then we look at it. Oh, right. I need to convert it into a curve before. So curve to mesh. Mesh to curve. Which already has a selection. So instead. <laughs> I can do ah whatever. Let's keep it like this. But you can see it works. There's some thickness. It does look a bit strange, but it works. I don't really know if that helped, but <laughs> yeah, fine. So this is the boundary. Uh, curve what was a mask this is the boundary I don't think we'll need this need it later but if we do then it's there okay No tree is slowly and steadily growing. That's nice. It's not getting too outrageous yet. It's also evaluating very quickly. It's very nice. I feel like the detail level here is a little bit too small because there's really no detail in the rest. Um, hmm. I think I'll just start making it spin now and try and add some. Oh, yeah, I should also attach this a little bit differently. Try and add some dynamics to the cloth. Also thinking of just making the wings a little bit wider. It's not super realistic, but it looks like the focal point right now is going to be the cloth on the wings. If I manage to actually make it move properly. And then uh, it might help when they're just larger, so you can see them properly. But yeah, the cloth I want to push a bit out.
And yeah, the nice thing is everything still works with it. Tell Dimitri to rig snow. I am excited. <laughs> I will. I will definitely let him know that multiple people asked in the stream. Uh, oh yeah, the keys that I'm pressing. I don't think uh, screencast keys is a default add-on anymore. Is it? No, I don't have it. I can make sure to, uh, for the next stream, install it. I don't want to do it right now. I want to keep going with this, but uh, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I thought about doing that, but it was already too late. I'll do it for next time. I can try remembering uh, to, to mention what key presses I'm doing from time to time when I think something might be interesting. But yeah, it's mostly mostly just uh, I mean the regular blender key presses like G for moving stuff, but also the node wrangler uh, node wrangler shortcuts. My voice is muted. Is it? I've only seen one person so far complaining about that. Before it was fine. Should be fine. Let's just try how it looks like when I size up the the wings a bit. Just gonna make it look a little bit more chunky as well. Size that up, and then the the grid here. Let's try this, or well, the factor should be wait five by twelve, twelve by five, and also here. Oh no, never mind, I need to uh no, I'm messing it up. I need to change the point positions. And those are here and here. It's a very chunky windmill weight. I'm also gonna move this back a little bit. More like this, so it's attached a little bit differently. Also just gonna add another bar just on the side here to, to hide this thing. But I wanna have it also peek out on this side because that's something I've been seeing on windmills a lot. Where was that? Here. Just the second one of these.
and then just eyeball it yet again. Nothing is lining up here, really, but that's okay. It would be nice to have the edges not be super straight, though. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a bevel node yet to help with that stuff. This is coming together, though. <clears throat> but yeah, I th think I'm going to add more detail in other places now. I want to have, yeah, I think I'm just going to have some um, tiles on the sides. I want to see if I can make that work. So... In theory, I should just be able to distribute a bunch of points and then make it work from there. That's going to be on the main hull. So on this thing, what is, what is going on here? This is not right. I was joining a bunch of geometry that I that I already joined multiple times. So, yeah, let's not do that. Will you be able to change the number of wings? Um, well, <laughs> practically, probably not. But in theory, yes. Wait. Let me just find the right value. There you go. It's a bunch of wings. It's not quite accurate. Let me quickly just mute this, then it's going to be a lot faster. Uh, yeah, it's not it's not really accurate. It's intersecting in all sorts of places. And it's also uh, the string is not in the right position anymore. I probably shouldn't change the number of wings. If we wanted to make that work, it would be possible to just drive this, dri drive the things that need to be adjusted with this resolution value. But we're just going to keep it at four. I mean, that's the prompt of the day. Four sides, four sided. So that's going to stay like this <laughs> as it works. Uh. The subdivision surface node to work as bevel. Hmm, yeah. I mean, I could uh, just use both the subdivide node and then the subdivide, uh, subdivision surface node because then I will be able to... Uh, hang on. Keep some edges. Or, I mean, I could use creasing. I haven't really used creasing with this, uh, with geometry nodes. It should, in theory, work. I don't know how, how well that actually wor uh, would work. But yeah, if I just add plates uh, in terms of tiles on top, then I don't really need to care about the edges anyways, because there's going to be detail that's hiding it. So I'm going to just go for that game plan. Um... Yeah, let's just try it out. I'm going to just take this into some space. It's a little bit uh, far off that other tree because I want to just have a little bit of space here. And then distribute some points. And I only want the points to be on 
the outer side, not at the top or the bottom. So let's take the normal. So back to math. Dot product, uh, some more math. Dot product with the z axis and then the absolute of that because if that is one, then we have ourselves a top or a bottom mask uh, face. So just compare this result with one. And only if it's less than one, I want to have points. Oh, yeah, right, right. It's, it's, it's curved at the top. I completely forgot about that. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. It's going to work out eventually, I think. But yeah, still works here at the bottom. There's no points. So let's create a bunch more points. This many. And then use points on disk. Because what I want to do is remove the points based on distance. Let's take like two centimeters, no, five centimeters, more. Uh, it's 10 centimeters. And I think that might give us an interesting result. Absolute into absolute. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. What, did, what, where, what was I planning to do here? Nothing. Not sure why I did that, but this this will be fine. Okay. Now just create some tiles. Uh, cube. Very thin cube. And we had them at 10, uh, 10 centimeters distance, or so they should also be about 10 centimeters large. Like one centimeter high. And then I instance them <coughs> on the points. And as for the rotation, let's just try this. That's something. Hmm. Actually, Yeah, let's see. This should be Yeah. I'm going to push this down so we can later rotate it around this point. So here I want to mm, Rotate this around the x-axis. Wait. Not the x-axis? Oh yeah, in local space. There we go. Now it's nicer. I do have to figure out what I'm going to do with the edges though. Because this just looks wrong. For now, let's just take a look at the, what this gives us in the final result. Oh, 
Those are tiles, yeah. It's recognizable as tiles, kind of. It's a bit unfortunate that you can't see much. Wait. Let's use a different matcap. It doesn't really help. Um, I mean, they should just not be perfect cubes. <laughs> Let's just look at it rendered with some studio lighting cycles. Uh, it's it's more recognizable as tiles. It's not too bad, actually. Uh, it's it's better than I would have expected. Actually, I thought this would just not work at all. But uh, it's it's not the worst. I will change the resolution of this top part. Where was it? This is the cloth. Here it is. And I should change this absolute here because um oh doesn't make a difference right oh oh no okay so the issue with with the tiles at the top here is just that the ones on this side are facing to the right and the ones on the other side are facing to the other side so yeah it's just bald at the top i will just um, merge this with the input to hide the baldness a little bit better. <laughs> uh, it's not ideal. But yeah, also I need to figure out what to do with the, the edges. I could... I could try and do the same thing that I isolate the boundary uh, edges, convert them to curves, instance something on them that cuts off the extra part basically and then throw a boolean on top. Or just decrease just, just make sure that there's no uh, tiles spawning here and then hide the edges with something else. I should do that anyways. I mean occlusion, that's a great idea. Uh, right, that's up here. Here. Wait. It's cavity. Was there no ambient occlusion in here? The shadow. There we go. Much better. This kind of works. Nice. Hmm. I kind of want to also now add some detail to the base. I think I'll. I'll just <laughs> worry about these edges later. They're okay-ish for now. One thing one thing that would probably help would be to just taper this at the top to make it uh, thinner because you don't really see that anyways. Just change the shape of the tiles. I think I'll do that thing and then table this issue for later. Okay, so this here needs to be tapered. How do we do that? Mm. Use the position, I guess. I don't know if... I feel like there has to be a better way of doing this, but I'll just do it the way that I know most. I use the position, and wherever the Y is... 
zero, I scale down the position on the x axis. Vector math. There has to be a better way of doing this. Oh yeah, right. This also has a selection. I don't even need to scale the vector. That's that's very nice. I think I I might have been able to utilize this earlier. Uh, I don't recall where I was doing the the vector math. I think for the cloth. But yeah, whatever. Um. On the x-axis, I scale it by, let's say, 0 0.5, but only for the points that are around 0, uh, around y equals 0. So compare y component, y component to be equal 0. There, there we go. That works. Yeah, it helps a little bit. Still not ideal, but it helps. It could also be a little bit more randomization. Maybe this should also be a little bit chunkier, a little bit thicker. That's nice. But yeah, detail on the base. Ah, the lie. Shadow. I don't know if shadow is going to be so great. What was it? Here. Hmm? It's, it's not bad. I feel like the... <laughs> yeah, the GPU is, is not liking it though. It's really dragging down the performance. I think I'll keep it like this. Um, Boolean. I guess this was about the edges. This is already cleaner than it was before. I keep it like this for now and then look at it later. This is still a nightmare. <laughs> it's still very much bald at the top. I'll I'll just have to add some more tiles manually at the top later on, I guess, but I'll forget about it now. I'm, I'm a little bit tired of the tiles, so I'll just do something else. I want to have some nice pattern on here, and I'm thinking of just creating something like this. Oh. Just some wooden planks that are that are put on here like this. So for that, <clears throat> I could either. Yeah, I think I think I'm just gonna go for the easier route. I could manipulate the vertex positions precisely to to create this pattern, but that sounds a little bit like a nightmare. Instead, I will just use some instancing. So, where was the base? Here. Okay, the base was very, very simple. It's gotta be a little bit more complicated now. But that's fine. <clears throat> Instead of this stuff, I'm going to create a tapered cube, which is going to just use the same idea that I just implemented for the tiles. Oh god, I should have... Yes. I need to name the tiles so I still, need, uh, still know what's going on later. Tiles. I'm just going to duplicate this. And that's going to be the base. 
was a tile before, it's going to be the base. This was the uh, the wideness of the base, the, the width. So let's use that for the combine XYZ. It's going to be X and Y. Um, let's say 10 centimeters high. And then here, instead of the Y component, I taper the by the Z component. And uh, instead of multiply, I just use scale. That doesn't work. Ah. Still doesn't work. Right, because the cube is aligned by the center. So I'll move it up with a transform node. I want to have a dynamic height so I can change it later on. So I'll just expose it right now. That's the height. Um, and then I transform, uh, the, uh, transform it by half the height up. I divide by two, I combine the vector, put that into the Z component and translate. And there we go. Now it's standing right there. And if I change the height, it's still standing up there. And then I use that to taper. Finally, there we go. Now it tapers. Should I taper? I should probably taper inwards. Yeah, I'll taper inwards. Let's instead of shifting it up, shift it down. Now do this. Okay. And now that's just one of the elements. Now I'll just repeat this and basically make a little bit of an array by just using a mesh line and using the points for instancing on top. That's already kind of it. Offset. There we go. Ah, this is still half though. Um, yeah, it's kind of it. That was that was easy. So that's a that's how you make make an array with geometry nodes. Just use the mesh line and instance on points. Um, I should already have it now then. Oh, right. I need to translate it into the correct position. No rotation. This goes away. And for some reason, it's much thinner than it should be. Huh? Whatever. It's fine. So we have a little bit of detail in there as well. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're cutting it really close here. It's precision work. Look at that. It's not even touching. Okay, I've been ne neglecting the chat for a while here. It's lagging. Ah, that was probably because of the shadow that I turned on. Yeah, we can technically take a look at it in the EV. 
Should look a little bit nicer if I change the settings around. Oh yeah, it's not even using the GPU for rendering. And also I should give it the normal pass as well. It's gonna improve the denoising by a lot. That's something. It still looks very strange at the top. But I'm relatively happy with the amount of detail for now. Okay. Still name this stuff so we don't forget about it later. This was the base. This used to be the base. No, it's not anymore. So let's just remove it. And I also save. Okay. It's quite a bit of stuff already. But the cool, the cool thing is with geometry nodes, you can just very easily do things modularly. And all these different things here have a very specific purpose. And it looks complicated when you look at it from afar. But when you break it down, it's all very simple steps. <laughs> Hell healthy. Yeah, but uh, also keep in mind that I didn't make a single node group yet. It's all just the tree. So what you're looking at is everything that I made to make this thing. And there's a bunch of detail. So it's not too bad, I would say. Okay. I'm thinking about <laughs> adding something like a window and a door. But I'm a little bit scared of actually committing to a sense of scale because right now it could be it could be any scale. It could be just a just a toy. Could be like a meter tall. Um but what else could I do? I mean I, I do have to still animate it and maybe have like a little bit of environment. Yeah, I think I'm I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do that rather for now. Oh yeah, and no, also I still need to just patch this stuff up. Let's do that first. Tiles. Okay, I can just use the same tile, which was this. Let's make that a node group. Tile. And then I copy that and use it somewhere else. Yeah, for that I just gonna I'm just gonna use another mesh line and do the same array idea. Um, of instancing on the line. So I use the points of the mesh of the of the mesh line and then instance the tile that I already had here. Mm. Now that I think about it, I, th I think it might be more efficient to use the exact same tile like this rather than using a node group terms of node tree evaluation. I mean, here it really doesn't matter because it's a tiny piece of geometry. But for heavier setups, it might be beneficial to actually use the same thing because it's just, otherwise it's gonna evaluate it twice, as far as I understand. But maybe I'm missing something as well. Yeah, the cloth needs motion from the wind. That's the thing that I was planning to do. So let's just do it. Uh, do it next thing after I patch up the bald spot. Um, right. So the line 
as to have an offset on the Y dimension with like 10 centimeters because that's the distance between the tiles that we said earlier. I transform it up. Where's the line? There it is. Actually, mm, yeah, let's just set a set the endpoints because then it's going to match what I need. So this, this is the hole with the tiles. Let's just join it with that. Where is it? There. <laughs> Just eye eyeballing it yet again. It's totally fine. Mm. Does it make a difference? Oh, it does. Wait, no, it doesn't. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Just noticed that I did mess something up earlier. I don't think it really matters though. It's probably going to be fine for the rest here. Yeah, this <laughs> this is not ideal, but it should be fine. So at the end, it needs to be a little bit less than a meter because there's still the length going on. And I'll just add a couple more and I want to introduce some randomization. I didn't do re really have any randomization in these tiles r uh, other than just the position of them. Uh, let's just add it right now here because these are a little bit too neat. And the way that works with the new system and fields is just with the random value node. We can also just get a random vector. And then you can just randomize stuff from directly with a field. And it's just going to use the, uh, the ID of the points. But yeah, that's a bit too much. Kind of want to tilt them a little bit more as well. Oh, wait. Yeah. I can tilt them here. And then actually, yeah, like, let's, let's do it like that. So negative one and 0.84. Yeah, yeah, that kind of works. <sighs> I sh yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to just use two. And the nice and easy way to do that is just by using the same thing, putting a different transform on it, on it uh, combine them like this. And then I'm going to have this be a little bit more to the right and this a little bit more to the left. That's 0.1 and negative 0.2. Ah, <laughs> okay. I'll I'll just keep it like this. Nobody's gonna notice. It'll be covered up by everything else. It's fine. Okay. 
bold spot. Okay. Yes, motion on the cloth. Finally. I've been talking about it from the very beginning, but it, only now I actually get to do it. Hmm. All right, so the cloth was here. But the deformation from the wind, I'm only going to do after it's realized on the rotor. So like here, I think. But for that, I will need an actual mask of the cloth. Yes, but that I kind of already have because I have the cloth UVs, which are these. So whenever I actually use those, those are going to be those are going to be completely useless on anything that is not the cloth. So if I create a mask from these cloth UVs, because th this is this is not actually named or anything. Before with geometry nodes, when you were actually dealing with uh, direct attributes in the geometry, whenever you would also call something in a different part of the node tree, cloth UVs, and also cloth UVs up here, and you join them, it's going to just use the same namespace, it's going to use the same attribute. But this is, doesn't actually have a name that you can address it with. The name is only what I gave it here for readability purposes. But the actual information is contained in the noodle, basically. Kind of. So you directly have to pass this around with nodes to use it and not address it with a name somewhere. And that way, whenever we merge this together with something else and use this connection afterwards, um, it's not going to use any, uh, any cloth UVs from anywhere else because this noodle only makes sense together with the geometry that we created here. Which in our case here is very neat because then I can just uh, manipulate the cloth with the same masks from before and everything else will not be addressed. So set position and I'll do it after the spinning. What was this? This thing. Uh, does it spin? It probably spins. <laughs> I think it spins. So this should also go in here. So it's also going to spin and this goes away. I'll just make these smaller, control H. And now everything that's supposed to spin is gonna spin. Or is it? Why is it on here? Why is it up there? <laughs> did I mess something up? Yes, I did. Uh, yeah. hmm. Right, that's the issue. Um, so the problem is that this transform node also makes that the whole rotor goes up. So it should, instead of what I was... Instead of what I was doing here, yeah, it's a little bit of a disaster here, but it's not a problem. I'm just gonna do it differently. So instead, 
instead of doing what I just did, I will just add it like one of the one of the other cylinders that I had here. So then it's going to spin for sure. And it's not going to be a nightmare with the rotation. So vertices 12. The radius is going to be different because it's going to be scaled up. But the depth should definitely be higher. But I'll just keep both around to just compare what's going on. I can just still delete it later. So it's going to be like this. And like this. And it's good enough. And then we can just delete this. And these. That's all fine. And now it's still going to spin. And this thing spins along. Perfect. Okay. So what am I looking at? A windmill. Of course. That's a windmill. Yes, flapping cloth. I, I keep forgetting about it. Okay, so um, for the cloth, yes, here it's realized this is the cloth UVs. I'm going to need those. But f for now, just so we can see what the what the game plan is, I will add a set position node and then use some vector math to create the offset. And that's going to be um, using a noise texture, not a white noise, just a regular Perlin noise texture. Oops. Yes. And then for this, let's see. Out of the UVs, let's just call it cloth UVs again. Oh. Cloth na UVs. I will just do this. I want to create a map. Okay, yeah, let's. I, rather than just doing it in my head, I should show actually what's going on. So. Let's look at Eevee. Eevee should be showing us the cloth UVs. What is going on? Did I mess something up with the material? I'm realizing and I'm setting, I'm not setting, I'm not setting the correct material. There we go. Sorry. There. So from the cloth UVs, I am subtracting 0 0.5 and x and y to center this. Then I'm absoluting it and separating the components. Basically the same thing that I did earlier for getting the boundary. But now there's a slight difference, which is that I use a um, maximum node, a smooth maximum node, I think, and an uprange node to create a mask. Like this. So the mask is zero at uh, at the outer edge. Why is this not doing anything? Did I mess something up? Is 
Is this note not working properly or am I... Am I missing something? Let me quickly check this. So I'll just do the exact same setup in shader notes. Or actually, first, let me check this in cycles. Okay, same result. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just uh, not thinking of something correctly. But let me try this out. So separate math. Uh, smooth max. Yeah, this should behave like this. Did we find another bug? I think so. Looks like the smooth maximum, and I assume also the smooth minimum is then probably not working. Yeah, that's that's what you get when you work with alpha versions of Blender, but that's fine. They're gonna be fixed. This works. Okay. Um, yeah, but if that's the case, what I can just do instead is invert this and use the, sm the smooth minimum if that works. I guess it's just a bug and I'll report it later. <laughs> it was a productive session, yeah. Well, I've been I've been using the Sprite Fred branch for the last like month and a half or something. And the first time I actually switched back to master, I completely forgot, oh, this is what it's like to report a bug because I wasn't used to it anymore. But before when we were uh, working on master every day, I would just constantly be reporting bugs because yeah, I mean, they, they just keep sneaking in. That's, that's just alpha versions. That's fine. Uh, but yeah, that's also one of the reasons why on the studio we are usually yeah, usually working with master to just be the crash test dummies and uh, catch a lot of the bugs before they uh, go out into the world. But yeah, this should now also work fine. Yeah, this is this is what I was expecting to get directly from the smooth max because now I can get these smoother corners, which is nice. Uh, yeah, and then also I'm going to, yeah, so this is one of the masks that I'm going to uh, gonna need, and then there's also going to be, I'm just going to multiply it with the X component, which was this, but it needs to be inverted first. So subtract it from one. And then I multiply it with this, and then I get this. Wait. <laughs> do I not need to invert it? Did I do something wrong? Let's just quickly check. Also, I don't need this. Yeah, it doesn't need to be inverted. Never mind. Sorry. Multiply. There you go. Because it's in, it's technically not supposed to flap here. It's just going to be connected there. Let's even change this around a little bit. For the map range nodes. There we go. Maybe even a smooth step. Okay. Good. And now we have a mask of where the mm, the cloth is actually supposed to be flopping. Or do we? Because it should only really be connected at the points and the edge here. Right now it's just going to be completely static here and here and that's not the point. Also Eh. Also, it should be flapping around a little bit here. 
So maybe I maybe I messed it up a little bit. But I will yeah, I can still change the mask later on. I will just illustrate the point of what's going to happen here. So I use this mask to scale the offset. The offset gonna is going to be in a certain vector direction. Which is positive y. Oh. You already can kind of see what's going to happen here. Um, and then the vector is also going to be scaled with a uh, with a noise. Uh, let's use a float curve. So, how's it going to look? Um, I think just more like more like this is probably going to be fine. Let's see. Oh, God. Not quite. <laughs> huh. I I feel like this might be a perfect opportunity to have the cloth actually wrap around this. So it's not intersecting it with some nice ray casting or so. Our proximity, I guess. I think I can f figure out something. A wave texture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There is one. Uh, I'm not sure I'm following everything in the chat, but I'm glad you guys are also talking amongst yourselves and give, giving advice. But if I'm missing something, just at me. Um, I'm having that problem packing BBH notes. Hmm? The render isn't initializing. Um, you can report it if you can. I mean, I, I'm assuming you're working on latest master and that can have crashes from time to time. So the, the workflow always is to try and simplify your issue, like trying to figure out what is causing the crash uh, and just make a pack a file from that simple case of reproducing that crash and reporting it to Blender uh, here. Just click this button already fetch all of your information from the computer and then you can attach information so the developers know what's happening but uh, yeah blender in alpha version is expected to sometimes crash it's just how it is because it's the the newest features and everything in there that just needs to be polished so it doesn't crash anymore Uh, can you share your expertise or education qualification? I want to understand which field you had learned. Uh, I personally, I went to university for physics. So that's maybe one of the reasons why I'm relatively technical and math oriented. It's I, I wouldn't I, I really wouldn't say that you need to have this education to do stuff with notes at all like the there's not that many connections, I would say, to to the information that I learned during uh, my physics studies. So it's it's mostly just this orientation of being r r rather technically oriented in general. And yeah, but what you're seeing here, like 
the math operations I'm using are all just multiplication scaling. It's it's relatively simple. When you look at it like this, of course, it doesn't look simple at all. And if you would go back to a node tree like this and it's not neatly organized, then everybody would have a hard time reading this stuff. But uh, if you just go step by step, it's really not as difficult as it seems to be at the first glance. Okay. Right. So this can be animated. I think, I, yeah, I don't really need three dimensions for this stuff because the, the windmill is only going to be oriented like this and it's basically a plane. So I'm going to manufacture my own uh, position vector. So I have one dimension for free, basically. So I separate the original position and I only really need the, you can look at it here, the Z and the X component and the Y component I don't really care about. So I'll combine it to a new position, give it the X and the Z, the order doesn't really matter. Uh, and then the Z is free for something else, which is going to be some animation. And for the animation, I'm just going to create another input and give it a driver that's hooked up to the frame. And a very easy way to do that is just type in hashtag frame because hashtag will just mark it as a driver and frame is just the name of frame in the driver namespace. So that automatically creates a driver and you can see it just has frame in here. And you can just change that to anything, anything you want to. It's just a regular driver. And that's probably going to be a little bit too fast. But you see the idea. <laughs> uh, it's not perfect. I'm honestly not quite sure why this is flapping at all. Uh, I think, yeah. Right. Mm. I need this to be clamped so there's no negative values. It needs to be zero. But that's. Mm. Actually, I think I might have a pretty decent idea here. I'll just use another map range node. And then also we just over overshoot this a little bit into the negative space. So I'll just start at negative 0.1 because then mm, this was the viewer. Then also this is not just going to be zero, but still flap a little bit. But these are still going to be zero, which is all I care about. Negative 0.15. And then still multiply with this, so so this is not flapping. I'll change this to smoother. Ah, no. I'll keep it at linear. Yes, because there were there were some artifacts that you might have seen earlier. Maybe that maybe you can just change it right now. Oh, it's still there. There's this edge right here. But also, I do want to have this cloth be smooth shading. So let's just do it right now. Just all of this should be the cloth. There we go. But there is this edge artifact, and I'm not 100% sure what's creating it. It's not this. I guess it's this movement in... No. 
No? Ah, good enough. It's better. It's recognizable as, as things flapping in the wind. It's not too bad. Another scale. Let me just move this stuff around. Oh god. Uh, I mean the speed, not the scale, sorry. The speed can just be controlled with a math node. By just dividing this by something. One is going to be no change, and let's just make it half as speedy. Something along these lines. But yes, now I need to somehow figure out a good way to um, to not make these intersect. And I have a couple of thoughts. So one thing I could do would be to kind of like ray march these things. So instead of just having a single step of displacing them with this thing, I could every I could just go very in, in very short increments and always just check. Okay, am I going to intersect or not? And uh, yeah, I think I'm going to just do that. But for that, I should probably isolate the mesh that I'm going to check the intersection against. And that's going to be, what was it? This? Hmm. So this, but then it needs the same um, the same circular array plus the same transformation, which is here. And I'm planning to end the stream at around six. <laughs> so I have eight minutes left to pull this off. But we'll see. Okay, I also realize the same thing. Let's just check this is actually the one I need. Looks like it. Spinning as well, it's good. So that's basically only the rotor blades. Let's create another frame. Blazed blades. And then I uh, just use some proximity. Now, some thinking. Um, because I'm only pushing it towards uh, on the y-axis, and the y-axis is not used from the position, I can just have this free-floating position field, basically, because this stuff's not going to change. And that's that's quite neat. Even though it doesn't really matter. Could also just capture it, 
but it's fine. And then Hmm. Yeah, I just make a bunch of these steps and they all use this as an offset. But instead of just using this as an offset, it's first scaled down by a proximity. And this is the true beauty of fields in action because the proximity to this second geometry is always going to be different because it's been pushed so in this step it's further away than the next step because it's pushing the the cloth further and further into the uh the mesh that it's intersecting with this mesh. And this f distance field here that I'm getting is going to be evaluated in every single of these steps, so it's going to change. But I don't need to actually duplicate this thing because it's a field, it's, it's dynamic. It's just going to be evaluated each time I use it. So instead, I can just simply scale this again with a proximity. And that's it. And it doesn't look amazing. <laughs> but it works. And I can still fix it now. So let's see. I need to map range this. And I want to scale it with zero when the distance is zero. That is fine. But otherwise, the scaling doesn't have to be as harsh. So yeah, that's way too much, obviously. And also, this shape isn't isn't too great. Is it even, hmm. Yeah, I should, okay. I need to definitely decrease the step size. Hmm. It's starting to be a little bit better. Okay, now it doesn't work anymore. Kind of getting there. It's a little bit too detailed. <laughs> Is he making waffles now? Yes. It's too detailed. I would love to just be able to smooth this thing. How can I improve this? Um. So it would be good if for checking the uh, if, if this mesh that I'm 
checking the uh, intersections against. I could just smooth in a way that this creates more smooth corners. And there's multiple way I could multiple ways I could do this. Mm, I don't think what if I just do a boolean? With itself, basically. Is that gonna do anything? So in the section? Does it And I subdivide? I don't think it works. It's kind of working a little bit. What if I... Um, hmm. It is working on the outside here. Oh, thunder crashed. Interesting. <laughs> it's the first time it crashed. Oh, it's already one past six. That is a sign, I guess. Let me try and actually at least get it into a proper state. So, auto save like one minute ago. That's fine. Um, okay. I think I'll just, yeah, I'll just keep it like this for now. It's bothering me a little bit <laughs> that it's this detailed and it, intersection is quite extreme here. But there's worse. So last thing that needs to be done is animate the spinning. It's going to be just a frame divided by 20. Oh god, it's way too slow. <laughs> is it even the right direction? I don't think it is. Let's just try one degree per frame. Beautiful. Stunning display of Dutch craftsmanship. Both in the software and the hardware sense. Okay. I think I'll keep it like this for now. I think it was a very productive stream. Uh, I hope there was a lot to, to learn and it was fun to watch. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do some way of rendering for this again tomorrow to just publish stuff and make a breakdown like I did for the first one. And uh, yeah, call this done otherwise. Maybe I'll <laughs> go ahead and fix some of the things I didn't get to during this stream. Uh, I'm not sure. But yeah, that's what we have. It kind of plays back with a stunning five frames per second, which is more than I would have expected, to be honest. So performance is great. And yeah, that's about it. See you next time.